I've roasted the card trader so bad he's just a Castlevania power-up now, waiting to restore four hearts. But we're not done with Konami's keepsake. The level-up cards and trader were just the beginning. Let's go over the best legendary drop cards in the game. Once again, I'll kind of be going in chronological order where I go over the dual monsters and GX drops first and the rest later. But yeah, Salomon Great Sanctuary is the best card. It took me over three weeks of farming to get. Enemy Controller is one of the the best staples in the game and maybe the best pure free-to-play card going. It's that ripped. Quick play spell that can activate one of two effects. Either it changes the battle position of an opponent's face-up monster or you contribute a monster to take control of a face-up monster your opponent controls. The first effect named bad can stop an attack which is always good in Duel Links but that second effect is just broken and the reason why enemy controller is limited to two. Taking control of your opponent's monster is such an amazing effect to think that your opponent can dump almost all, if not all, their resources into a boss monster and you just take it. You can cause your opponent to minus in card advantage so much, especially with Link summoning now where enemy controller targets can just be linked away. But it can also disrupt by stealing combo starters on your opponent's turn and I can tell you as a Burning Abyss player, literally the worst thing that can happen to me is getting my Beatrice stolen by enemy controller. Typically though, whatever deck is running it needs tribute fodder to utilize enemy controller's full potential, and of which the current tier 0 Salomon Great puts up fodder to use enemy controller's full potential for sure. A strong reminder as to why this card usually ends up in decks as the limit too before Konami adds other restrictions to those decks. And part of that is Treacherous Trap Hole as well, but it doesn't downplay enemy controller. It is a super rare drop reward for dual monsters and DSOD Kaiba. Everyone loves Lava Golem! I'll just wipe out two of your boss monsters with a non-targeting, non-destruction removal. I always thought it was funny that you could use this on two Sabre dancers and your opponent wouldn't have the dignity to do a damn thing about it. You're getting burned. Level 8 Fire Fiend, Lava Golem can special summon itself to your opponent's field by tributing two monsters they control. It does take away your normal summon, but during the standby phase, the card's controller takes 500 points of damage, which means your opponent. The centerpiece of Toxic Stall in Duel Link since this boy dropped. But the card has actually gotten better in ways, and not for any stall reasons, really. It's just grown to be an amazing form of removal, and it can do something Volcanic Queen, Santa Claus, and Doggeran can't do, and that's tribute two of your opponent's monsters, which might as well be a board wipe in Duel Links. But the fact that it does take up your normal summon does make it objectively inferior to Santa Claus and Doggeran that don't, but there's no activation of the effect either, no warning, no chance. You're getting burned to death, and like enemy controller, depending on what you tribute, you can cause your opponent to minus so much, an absolute menace. Dark Flare Dragon is a lot more niche than enemy controller and a lot less gimmicky than Lava Gun. Admittedly a kind of mediocre card, but has seen its fair share of success. Level 5 Dark Dragon, banish a light and dark monster from your grave to summon him. Then on a soft once per turn, you can send one dragon type monster from your hand and one dragon type monster from your deck to grave to banish a card in your opponent's graveyard. And like we know, thanks to DD Crow, how good that effect is, and granted, it's not a quick effect, but it can also set up your graveyard with Dragon-type monsters. Maybe like uh, Curse of Dragonfire and Gaia, that can then be revived by Gaia the Magical Knight. And that is where this card has seen play and still sees play. In a not always debatable rogue deck, look, I got nothing against it, I just forgot about the structure deck for the video, okay, I'm sorry. But look, even though he's another side man to Chaos Dragon, he's still a good free-to-play card. A legendary drop for Mokubakai. So that's gonna do it for this video. I thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next one.